Welcome everyone, you found Sanctuary's Coffee and Conversation Show. I'm Myrna Haskell, Executive Editor of Sanctuary Magazine. This is an online publication for women that empowers and inspires with a focus on the arts, philanthropic pursuits, health and wellness, culture and community. You can find us at sanctuary-magazine.com. This morning, my guest is Talene. She is an award-winning abstract artist. She's an environmentalist living in an off-grid, fabulous home in Southern Colorado, and her artist studio is also solar powered. And Talene also happens to be a gold sponsor. So we love all the support she's given us over the last year or so. And you can find an exclusive interview to learn more about her art from our Meet Our Sponsors page. And you can get that right from the homepage. So welcome, Talene. Pauline, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Myrna. It's nice to be here. Oh, and it's so great to see you, as I mentioned when we first came on. But anyway, <laughs> um, I want to dig right into our topic because it's a very important one, and that's holistic health and its relationship to the arts and the environment. And I wanted to start out talking about your personal healing journey because you were diagnosed with an invasive breast cancer not too, too long ago, and you're doing fabulously now. But I want the listeners to hear a little bit about the backstory, you know, what the journey was like for you when you first heard the diagnosis. Obviously, that was probably a little bit of a shock, but then what your mindset was and how you springboarded into your, your journey. Well, initially, when I got the, you know, the big reveal and the big woo-ha, um, I, I was in major disbelief, shock and fear, a fear beyond words. And, uh, you know, between uh, the support with my husband and talking and um, I decided to take my time uh, to rebalance, ground myself and recenter before I made any decisions. Um, I took a deep, deep dive into research and I was looking at options uh, from a global and a historic perspective uh, just on how um, you know, doctors and even different cultures dealt with uh, cancer. But the one common thread um, that I noticed, no matter who I listened to or who I read, was the power of the mind over the body is really important. So, you know, taking that and, you know, using that as a springboard and launching off from that idea, I built a team of doctors, you know, from both the Western and the um, Eastern philosophies, uh, who believed in me and believed in, you know, my, um, how I wanted to put my healthcare approach together. And, you know, all seven of them, they're all wonderful people and they're all focused on hope and faith. So I think that's, that was really important to me. So. And it should be, you know, I, I think lots of times patients forget that. Yeah. It has to be a team, right? Yeah. It team. has to be you and your doctor and or doctors working together. And if it's not yeah. a team and there's some kind of a disconnect there, that's not helping the whole wellness picture, right? And the patient's the boss. Yeah. The patient yeah. is the boss. We. I, I hope know, everybody I, heard Talene say that. The patient is the boss. We're Everybody the boss. I'm the boss. That. Yes. Yeah. And it's, it's my body. body and you, if you're mine. connected to your body, yeah. you know what's going on with your body too, right? And all those yes, nuances exactly. and things that you're experiencing are important for your medical team to know. That's exactly right. So it's important that people know that, that you're the boss and, and so, everybody that you surround yourself with should be supporting you. That's right. That's yeah. right. And yeah. so it's, so I've known you for a while now, and I know that you've had a really positive attitude about this healing journey you embarked on. Um, and so that whole, you know, brain body connection, again, that you spoke about is so, so important. I've read that folks that sort of, you know, get depressed and have a real negative sort of outlook about disease tend to have you know, not as good outcomes as folks That's that right. are just invested in themselves and they continue to do things that make them happy and they try to recharge and it helps your whole energy level and your body to heal in general, right? That's true. Yeah, yeah. that's very true. 
So I know because I've been with you a couple of times that um, a big part of this for you uh, was your diet and what you put into your body. And we all know that, uh, you know, gut health is so, so important. We've had some articles on that. Laura Pensiero, just she's a nutritionist, yeah. just wrote one recently. Um, and so that's a big part of the holistic health picture is diet, right? So I'm hoping you can tell us some of the things that you've learned and some of the things that you did to make yourself feel good again and to prepare your body to fight disease? Well, during my research, um, you know, I uncovered um, Dr. Otto Warburg. Um, he discovered the cure for cancer and was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize around 1923. Wow. The secret <clears throat> That's and long. his wow. premise, it's amazing. His The secret to curing any disease or, you know, cancer in this case is to alkalize and oxygenate the body disease. He said disease of any kind cannot survive in an, in a, it cannot survive in an, in an alkaline, clean, oxygenated environment. So I, I took that as a springboard again, and, um, you know, did more digging and research into nutrition because he really focused on nutrition also. Okay. And I added, the, I added the principles of the Gershwin therapy, which includes 100% organic fresh whole foods. And I omitted anything that was acidic, prepared, radiated, sugared, preserved, unclean, unnatural, genetically modified, or causes inflammation. So, you know, I, <clears throat> I uh, studied the, the Pral, P-R-A-L food charts and, and the Basica food charts, that's B-A-S-I-C-A. -A. Um, and it, and it, they give lists of, you know, the acidity and alkalinity level of the foods. So, you know, as an example, um, you know, I just focused a, a lot of my intake on fresh fruits and vegetables um, that are organic. Um, some of the things that I had to change, which, which weren't really that much was, um, I had to touch, to remove more of the prepared foods. Uh, mm -hmm. so canned foods, things that come in plastic, things that you just heat up and, you know, away you go TV dinners and things like that. So, um, you know, I love to cook. Um, so the new challenges to modify, recipes to suit my dietary and nutritional needs has really actually been a lot of fun and you know learning and incorporating I had to more do vegetables. that with the gluten-free diet telling and I had to redo recipes yeah. and to learn how to do recipes that had been you know had gone through my family for decades and make them gluten-free because I have a gluten intolerance yeah um, but, you know, I heard you say uh, processed foods and clean foods and those kinds of things. But I also heard you say um, acidity. So is does that affect the body similarly to, you know, inflammation? Like we want to keep the acidity down in our system as well. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So any anything, any food or drink that you put in your body that that is acidic will cause acidity in the body. Okay. Will cause inflammation, will cause arthritis, will cause diabetes, you know, Parkinson's, cancer, the inflammation is the, the underlying problem with disease. Okay. Yeah. And so, so you needed to stay away from the processing and boy, and that started big time in the seventies when everybody was rushing around because it became a two person, two people in the household in some instances were working long hours and we needed to find faster ways to get dinner on the table. Right. That's right. And, and so, I, and I was just watching with my husband, one of these, um, all in the family episodes, you know, from back in the seventies and I'm looking at Edith in the kitchen and we were both laughing and going, Oh my God, look, there's the canned stuff. There's the TV dinner stuff. There's the wonder <laughs> bread, the white bread, you know, and we were just like, wow, like that's really when it became a big thing. And I think we're starting to come out of that now, but it's, it's still a problem. It's yeah. still a problem with processing and added sugars. I think you mentioned added sugars too, are a yeah. big deal, right? You want yeah. to avoid that and any sort of added chemicals and things. People really need to be reading labels. That's right. right. If, That's right. if they don't happen to just be at the farm, like buying off you know, the tables yep. there at the farm and you're in a grocery store, mm -hmm. you really have to dig into the labels to see what's in there. Right. 
So was there anything yeah. that you did in terms of, because it is a little harder, I think, to eat clean these days. So is, are there any tips you want to give listeners about what you did when you had to travel? Because we know that that becomes an issue now too, because now you're on the special diet to heal yourself, right? Do you have any travel tips? Well, I, I just, I travel with fruits and vegetables and, you know, I bring my protein powders and, you know, Costco makes a really great turkey bacon. And, um, you know, I put together, a, you know, a, a bag of food and, you know, the TSA people are always very accommodating and, you know, very helpful. And, you know, by the way, if you've got any kind of inflammatory problem, you can opt out of going through those x-ray machines with TSA that you can ask for the pat down. And they're more than happy to do that for you. Oh, so okay. That's getting the pat point. down, going through TSA is really important. Okay. Yeah. That's a good point. Really I'm sure there's some people that don't realize they can do that. Yeah, oh yeah. You because you do that. have foods and you otherwise you'd be flagged with it, right? Right. You have yep. to explain what the situation is. Is there anything else that you uh can like do you what other kinds of things that you do you do? Like I'm sure you look at if like you, you have to go to a dinner event or something through business or whatever, and then you have to worry about, you know, what you're eating there. Is there besides like looking at what the menu might look like? like ahead of time is there anything else you do do you carry teas or anything with you when you go to yeah I do I carry my I carry my teas with me and sometimes I have little snacks with me just in case and you know but the usually the waiters and the waitresses and the and the cooks and the chefs are they're very knowledgeable and and you know they've had people before ask and they're very helpful you know if there's nothing on the menu that I can eat or if there's certain ingredients I need to avoid you know they're they're more than happy to leave out you know vinegar or leave out you know some of the things that I can't tomatoes things that I can't eat um um and a lot of times I get I'll get a meal that's prepared just for me which is kind of nice <laughs> yeah well, that is really it's, it's nice easy. Yeah. You know, when you mentioned vinegar, Tali, and I just thought too, like this whole idea with the acidic stuff. So foods that also sit in your stomach for a long time aren't good either, right? Because then your That's your right. body is producing more acid to digest them, right? So is that also a problem? Well, it's mostly it's mostly how long does it take the food to get through your um your liver, your kidneys, and your you know digestion. So the longer a food sits in your colon. Um, the, you know, the more, um, um, mm, I can't think of the word right now, but it, it's just not good when it takes a long time to digest. You want your food okay. to get in your mouth and down and out, um, you know, fairly rapidly. Um, right. If your and stomach you is gurgling sure. and all of that, that something's not the right. Acid's it's okay. not supposed to be yeah. that kind of thing. Usually, usually people that have a, a, a disease is because their gut's not digesting properly. So, right. you know, I take digestive enzymes and hydrochloric acid because, you know, my digestion has been sluggish. And so okay. I'm, am, I'm adding more to help my body digest better. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's talk a little bit about the environment because I know that, you know, the environment is part of this piece, you know, and when I say environment, I don't necessarily mean just your actual physical, natural environment, but also your, your lifestyle, you know, stress is a big issue for disease, right. And for state of oh, mind. Yeah. So anything you want to say about the environment being part of this whole holistic healing journey? You know, the, our journey from lament to glory is a graceful journey. It's a way, it is the way of the future. And, um, you know, I've thought a lot about, about, about just about the the path and um you know i'm fascinated by depictions coming out of trauma and suffering and i'm also daring to paint and create a future through hope um you know i'm interested in making something new out of brokenness while at the same time caring for the brokenness and the trauma and you know i thought it doesn't really matter where you're from we all face struggles Mm -hmm. um, that's really when the meaning of life presents itself. Um, you know, faith is about the possibility of the future. 
I believe that faith is a substance of things that we hope for, the evidence of things unseen. You know, we're all artists when we consider the future. And I'm, I'm asking myself, how do we create a better world? It's a way towards the future that imagination can begin to unfold this impossibility to create a better story. You know, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. And you know, what we do when we make is to create the future by using our imaginations first by faith. You know, without faith, we cannot create the future. And, you know, I'll say it again, our faith happens to be a substance of things <clears throat> hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. So, <clears throat> you know, it's really important to pay attention to your internal environment. Yes, you know, what's what going I'm on? You say, yeah. Yeah. How yeah. you're, what are you thinking? How are you responding or reacting to your external environment and how, you know, you can maintain your hope? you know, for, and look for the evidence of those things that are unseen, because those are the things that will shift and change and, um, you know, create new things for the future. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm hearing that the, the mind-body connection keeps coming up again and again mm -hmm. for you. And I feel like throughout your journey, you were constantly listening to your inner self about mm -hmm. how you were feeling if you traveled you know if i mean if you found that you were stressed with travel because you do live in a in an environment that is very peaceful right where you Quiet. live so you must be able to find ways that you um sort of decompress in those circumstances do you do, you do something if you feel yourself starting to get you know like some, my body doesn't feel right in this situation is there are there any tips there that you can tell listeners that you do for yourself to like bring yourself back down if you feel like you're in a stressful environment or situation well if i'm traveling and i'm in a crazy airport you know, might, <laughs> which we've all been in <laughs> yeah that happens a lot you know i might just sit there i i always travel with earplugs you know because that either lessens the sound or it dampens it and and i okay. can just close my eyes uh you know and just rest quietly or if it becomes too overwhelming with activity I I just remove myself I go for a walk or I go find someone to talk to or I go to the bathroom or you know the airports have those meditation prayer rooms and those are really nice to just go and you know re reboot and um read a book in a quiet room so so you're listening you know, to yourself of, there's again. lots of options Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's that yeah. listening to your body again and doing mm -hmm. what's right for yeah. you inside. And so that, That's right. that you can heal as well. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about your art a little bit more. And so I know that your art is directly connected to the environment. You, you're inspired by, you know, nature's ever-changing beauty. You've done all these different collections, some of them about the rain or about clouds or about just the changing colors and the sunset or the mountains, whatever it is. Um, but if you can talk a little bit about your art, was was actually doing your art part of your healing journey? Do you believe that the arts can be used to help people heal? Anything you want to say about that? You know, I've I've struggled with that question because it really is all about creating possibilities uh, of this new vista. You know, I've I've not walked this path before. Um, but upon reflection and deep thinking, I've come up with this idea. Of course, it might sound, it might be something that only an artist can say, but um, art is about creating the impossible into possibilities to give you a portal of this new vista that may not have existed before. I'm daring to paint to create a future, um, and I'm going from lament to glory um, you know, in, in going from, you know, doing that action and in going from lament to glory, we begin by beholding and lamenting, but that act done in faith, uh, will create a vista of glory and something new, something that could not have existed before the trauma. 
we're all survivors. Um, you know, I thought about that. We're all survivors, especially after the pandemic. It's a oh, miracle. Yes. That, it's a miracle that we're all here today. Yeah. Um, you know, I count it as a privilege of this miraculous journey as an artist to not only have survived, but to be able to offer beauty back in a devastated world. I found that the arts in general during the whole pandemic thing were a way that people even that weren't as much into the arts, they were using that as a healing portal because, you know, you had your performing artists doing things online, you had artists teaching online, any way to sort of reach people and have them be able to still continue to experience music and, and painting and, and the things that art that bring us joy through the arts, you know? So was it to just ask yeah, the a glory. little bit, to just ask you specifically a little bit more about the actual creating of the art um, since you were healing, is there anything you want to say about that? Did that, did that help you? Did it make you feel better? You know, how did that fit into your, your journey? Because I know you did continue to work even on some of the days oh, yeah. that maybe you weren't feeling quite as well. Yeah. You know, um, I, I love color. Color always makes me feel better. Um, and on those days when, you know, I might've been too tired or, you know, sometimes I would just forego that and rest like I needed to, but some days I was like, you know, I really need to be around some red today. And so I'd go down <laughs> I love red. You know, red or yeah. it's a very healing color. Uh, you know, and, and I think at that time, especially for the past two years, I did a lot with reds and oranges and yellows. And those are colors that really made, gave me energy, made me feel good. Um, I did, I've been working on some big paintings with blue, you know, and blue to me is a very, it's my favorite color, but, um, it's a very powerful color for me and and um uh not only in helping me to stay calm but focused and um you know so on those days when i needed a boost um i'd go down sometimes and i would either work or i would just sit you know i have this nice white lounge chair in my studio and i'd hang the paintings so that they were right around me you know my especially my large paintings that are life size you know so yes. I would be just enveloped in blue and I would just sit there and take in the blue and it, it just always made me feel good um you know aside you from the see, you you do see obviously then the art yeah. as a as a path toward healing as well oh, yeah. for me yeah absolutely yeah the color color and sometimes the physical action of just working through you know, so, oh gosh, a doctor just said this. Oh no, I need to go work something out. You know, I'd go right. for a walk or pick up my brush and just, you know, I, I did a whole series uh, of paintings that were real close to the diagnosis um, day. And, you know, it was a lot of, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, scratching. you probably, if, do you have things labeled at all chronologically you probably oh, yeah. can just yeah. read your moods and your feelings through your work yeah. right like a diary yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and wow. the titles you know the titles are you know poet it's a poetry line of poetry but it also is very specific on what I was going through so, so each your, collection your art tells your story yes so nice yeah. And I know that a little birdie told me you're working on some new stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't wait to see some of that. But I thought you might want to take a few minutes to tell our listeners a little bit about some series you've been working on. You've been doing some writing and some art together. So anything you'd like to say about that? Yeah. So I, I, I work in collections and um, um, the, the, P, the collection that I just finished uh, I wrote about in my blog and uh, it's called An Ideal Hope. Um, it's and, hope um, again. I love that. It is hope An again. An Ideal Hope. That's nice. Yeah. And, and I'd really, I'd like to read just a paragraph from my blog. Uh, it, it's it's An Ideal uh, Hope Part 4 in my blog. There are four parts. Oh, um, I would love so, to hear that. You'll read that yeah, so, now? 
Oh, good. I'm going to, I'm going to read the paragraph. So it's okay. the most important impact we have on each other is through how we affect each other's hope. Hope breeds hope. When hope exists, we engage with our environment more. Hope engages our creativity and our problem solving skills. Sometimes when we call upon to help someone keep their hope alive, Sometimes we may be called upon, sorry. Sometimes we may be called upon to help someone keep their hope alive. That's a noble thing to do when we help others remain hopeful. We in turn see that we are constantly motivating ourselves to stay hopeful as well. Being positive, being a positive influence on the world around, you will inspire and motivate people to stay hopeful in their own goals. Each one of us has the capacity to influence each other to stay hopeful. And then I love Anne Frank, where there's hope, there's life. It fills us with courage and makes us strong again. Ugh. The capacity to hope is an indispensable human quality. Even in times of crisis, when confidence and trust has been broken, hope sustains us in our living. So I encourage you all to be kind and helpful to one another. You never know just how much you, you could change someone's life. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Okay. What a I've wonderful had so many message. People. What I've a wonderful so message. People. Yeah. And I, I hope it. those folks that are suffering out there right now, whether it's through, you know, disease or heartache or whatever it is, that you take in some of this and, and, and hopefully, you know, you can help yourself heal from within because I'm, that's kind of what I'm getting from this, Talene, this experience with you today is that, um, you worked with a team of doctors who believed in you, you read your body, you knew yeah. how to respond to your body as your body was changing and how to, ha how you had to help yourself. And in that community of medical folks too, they helped you with that. So they yeah. were helping you with your hope and your drive to become well. That's and right. if the larger community is also helping, then that's even a better thing, right? Yeah. It's, so it's the attitude, attitude yeah. and happiness. And, you know, you've probably read like how important hugs are, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm a hugger, but yeah. like, hugs are healing too, right? And that's a way without verbalizing that people can show their support as well. Right. So yeah. And listening and, and listening. taking the time to just listen. Yes. You know, to be present with someone and say, Hey, I want to tell me your story. I want to hear all about you. It, it's helpful. And so before we close off, Talene, how are you feeling today? I feel great. It's a beautiful day. You look wonderful. You yeah. just look, I mean, it's considering what you faced um, yeah. and how you're feeling now and how your body responded to all of these ways that you've naturally healed. I mean, it's amazing. It really is amazing. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, I just wish for you, you know, happiness and continued health, good health moving forward. Thank you. I thank you so much for this, Tali. Thank you. This is such a wonderful message for our listeners and our readers. And I know that, you know, a lot of what we do at Sanctuary is about healing and is about alternative therapies too and ways. And the whole alternative therapy thing too, I want to say is everybody, if they're in tune with how they're feeling and what their body's doing, they kind of if you, if you listen to yourself, you know, what's going to help you. Right. So whatever that is, that's exactly move right. forward with passion about what you're feeling deep inside, because that's probably the avenue you need to take. I think, right. You, every, you own, you're the boss. You're the one that knows what's going on in your own body. No one else. Yes. So listening is really important. Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank Truly you. Appreciate you. This was oh, awesome. It was wonderful. Thank you. Always good to spend time with you. Yes, it is. Totally. <laughs> Thanks. I feel the same way. Yeah. So I'll close as I always do by wishing all of our listeners and our readers good health, happiness, and continued inspiration. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.